Okay, this is, I'm now walking up and I've got the video camera so I've got to be careful I don't fall down. Um, this is the exact march that the 14th Tennessee would have taken. This would have been their view. It rained for three or four days like it's done here. Heavy rain, mud, marsh. Even as we climb this ridge here, you still can't see the car that well and you can't even see the North Carolina monument that's right there. So they had no idea what they were facing. But when the 14th Alabamians on that side of the ridge started to attack the guns of Pegram, they forced Pegram's artillery to fall back. In doing so, it left a gaping hole in Cutler's brigade that was in this direction. At this point in the battle, the Iron Brigade had not formed yet. They were still back by the, Miss, by the Lutheran Seminary. But according to one report from a colonel who was at the seminary who ordered them forward, the Iron Brigade was at a full run. They only had to slow down momentarily to get into a line of battle. But in doing so, these woods right behind me, the Wisconsin men entered these woods, and according to a report from one New York colonel, from a Wisconsin colonel who was leading that charge, the first volley lost 30% of their rank and file, including two standard bearers. So we'll see the monument later. But the Wisconsin would have been coming from this direction. Wisconsin poured into the mix. The seventh Wisconsin was right behind them. They poured into the mix. The Alabamians who were probably over, the, I see a marker way out that way, which could be them, um, turned to attack the position here. And in doing so, opened themselves up to the 25th Michigan, which was over in this division, and crumbled the whole Archer Brigade, leading to Archer's capture himself and a loss of most of Archer's Brigade.